Hello, geometry students. Mr. Zazik back and better than ever here. We're rolling along and we're moving into Unit 8. And in Unit 8, we're going to be looking a lot at right triangles and uh, trigonometry. But we're going to begin um, today by talking about the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. So we want to answer the question, what is the Pythagorean theorem and its converse and how do we use it? So this first sentence here tells us what the Pythagorean theorem is. If a triangle is a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the legs, of the lengths of the legs, is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So this is the Pythagorean theorem right here. Okay, Leg squared, leg 1 squared plus leg 2 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So how do we tell what is the hypotenuse and how do we tell which ones are the leg? If you go to your uh, right angle and you draw an arrow across from that, that is the hypotenuse. It's always the longest side. The other two sides are your legs and it doesn't matter um, the order, which one you call leg one, leg two, that's interchangeable. And uh, very commonly, we use the letters A, B, and C to represent uh, the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so A squared plus B squared equals C squared is a representation of the Pythagorean theorem. But actually, the Pythagorean theorem is the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, so we have a phrase called Pythagorean triple, and it's a set of non-zero whole numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so you may see this, these are some common ones, the 3, 4, 5 triangle, or a 5, 12, 13, or an 8, 15, 17, and the list goes on and on and on of the number of whole numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. So that's the key with when you see that phrase Pythagorean triples is they need to be whole numbers and they need to make that equation true. All right. There's other decimals and square roots that make that true, but to be a triple it has to be a whole number. So uh, if the sum of the squares of the lengths of two sides of the triangle is equal, um, then we have a right triangle. So if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we know it's a right triangle. However, it doesn't always equal that. So if you take the longest side squared and it's greater than a squared plus b squared, in that case, this triangle is an obtuse triangle. Okay. So if we look at this picture here, see how... Uh, c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared. That's obviously not a right triangle because if it was a right triangle it would be equal. So when that longest side squared is greater than the sum of the other two squared, you have an obtuse. And then in the event that the longest side squared is less than the other two sides, uh, which we have going on here, you have an acute triangle. So if we we're going to summarize that really just quick, so if c squared equals a squared plus b squared, that's a right triangle. Okay, when c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, you have an obtuse triangle. And when c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, you have an acute. And remember, c always represents the longest side in those relationships. Okay, so... Let's do some uh, examples here. So we've got uh, the lengths of the legs of a right triangle have lengths 10 and 24. So let's kind of draw a picture here of a right triangle. Okay, so this is going to be my hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. And that means this is a leg and this is a leg. So... Um, the lengths of the legs are 10 and 24. Uh, what is the length of the hypotenuse? Do the side lengths form a Pythagorean triple? Um, so let's see what we have here. So we think of this as, okay, 
the leg squared plus the leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Again, a lot of times we'll do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If we do it that way, this is a, b, this is c. So 10 squared plus 24 squared equals, I'm going to call that c squared. c again represents that hypotenuse. Okay, so if as we're pulling this up here, um, 10 squared is 100. So we've got 100. Uh, 24 squared is, I'm just pulling my calculator up here, 576 equals c squared. Okay, so we add those together. Obviously, we get 676 equals c squared, and then we're going to take the square root. When we take the square root, we're not interested in the negative root. Um, so only the positive. That is a perfect square. And um, so that's 26. All right, so the second question, what is the length of the hypotenuse is 26. Do the side lengths form a, a Pythagorean triple? Um, yes, the sides um, are a uh, Pythagorean triple. And the reason is because they satisfy the Pythagorean theorem and our whole numbers. So all the side lengths are whole numbers. And it satisfies the leg squared plus the leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Okay, one Pythagorean triple is a 5, 12, 13. Sometimes in like standardized test, you'll see these Pythagorean triples like down the road when you take the ACTs or a, you know, kind of a, a SATs or a college entrance exam. They really like these Pythagorean triples. So um, if you multiply each number by two, what is the result? Well, that would become a 10, 24, 26. We just multiply each of those numbers. How do the numbers that resulted compare to the lengths of the sides of the triangle in part A? Um, well, they're twice as long. And it still is a um, triple. So this is still a uh, Pythagorean triple. So what we mean there is... If you did 10 squared plus 24 squared, that would still equal 26 squared. And all of those numbers are whole numbers. Hey, look at that. That's actually the question. That was the triangle that we found in part A. Okay, so this was our triangle in part A. So kind of like in that idea of if you see 10, 24, 26, and you recognize that that's a 5, 12, 13, you might be able to just go right ahead and multiply by 2 to find the hypotenuse. Okay? All right. Now, the hypotenuse of a right triangle has a length of 12. One leg has a length of 6. What is the length of the other leg? Express your answer in simplest radical form. So I always like to draw a picture. So we've got our right triangle again. Here's our hypotenuse, okay, leg, leg. We'll call this leg one, leg two. So the hypotenuse has a length of 12, and let's say leg one has a length of 6, and let's call uh, leg two x. So x squared plus 6 squared equals 12 squared. So x squared plus 36 equals 144. So x squared, we subtract 36 uh, from 144, and we get 108. Okay, And then x is going to be the square root of 108. Well, 108 is not a perfect square, so we're looking for the largest perfect square that goes into 108, uh, which is going to be 36, goes into it three times, the square root of 36 is 6 radical 3, okay? So that would be the length of the leg. 
Now, this is not a Pythagorean triple because that length isn't a whole number. Okay, so this length, so that would not be what we would consider a Pythagorean triple. Okay, the size of a computer monitor is the length of its diagonal. You want to buy a 19-inch monitor that has a height of 11 inches. What is the width of the monitor? Okay, so again, if you ever buy uh, computer monitors, this is this is how they uh, tell it. So, so in a 19-inch monitor, they're referring to the diagonal, and this is a um, 11 inches height. Well, what do we know about a computer monitor? Well, a computer monitor is a rectangle, so we know this is a right triangle. So across from our right triangle, here's our hypotenuse. Okay, this is leg one. This would be leg two. And let's call that, oh, I don't know, let's call it A. All right, so A squared plus 11 squared equals 19 squared. Okay, so A squared plus 121 equals um, 19 squared. Um, that's not fresh in my mind. Uh, that's 361. So when we subtract 121, we get A squared equals 240. Now this one says round to the nearest tenth of an inch. So we're just going to take the square root. We're going to put that in our calculator. Do the square root of 240. Okay, and this is approximately 15.4919. So the width, if we're going to round this to the nearest tenth, would be 15.5 inches. And a lot of times this is where this right triangle stuff is going to show up in different quadrilaterals. For example, um, in a rhombus. We know that the diagonals are perpendicular. Perpendicular lines form right angles. We got a right triangle. Hey, we might use the Pythagorean theorem in that type of question. All right, a triangle has side lengths 85, 84, and 13. Is a triangle a right triangle? Explain. Okay, so here's the question. Okay, coming back, just had a little announcement, so paused. So is this a right triangle? Well, if the longest side squared... So does 85 squared, here's the question mark, does that equal 84 squared plus 13 squared? If it does, then we have ourselves a right triangle. So 85 squared is 7,225. Okay. 84 squared is 7,056. And... 13 squared is 169. So when we add 7,056 to 169, we come up with 7,225 equals 7,225. Okay, so that's true. So is this a right triangle? Yes, because uh, the lengths... Uh, are true in the Pythagorean theorem. Or maybe we could say like it uh, satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. So now this one says we've got side lengths uh, 6, 11, and 14. All right, is it acute, obtuse, or right? So if we do 14 squared and, and then we do 6 squared plus 11 squared, Okay, we're really trying to figure out what is that relationship between those two. So 14 squared is 196, 6 squared is 36, and 121. So 121 plus 36 is 157. So 196 is greater than 157, so therefore the, the triangle is obtuse because that length there is greater. So because that 196 is greater, that's an obtuse triangle. If it was um, the other way around, if it was less than, it would be an acute triangle. 
Okay, so again, we're going to have a lot of places where this right triangle tra or, um, Pythagorean theorem is going to show up. It's kind of going to pop its head into a whole bunch of places. So real critical that we um, can recognize this and understand how to find those missing sides. All right, we're off to the start with uh, Unit 8. Let's keep things rolling, and I'll see you soon.